Now let's work on examples. Uh, first example, uh, the briefing room where there are many metallic uh, elements. There are coffee pots, cabinets, door handles, and uh, well, I think that's already that. So we're, I'm going to work on the coffee pots. I have set up my four lights. Okay, one camera, four lights, and two areas. Now I make a rapid render. Okay, uh, so I, I don't have a lot of shadow samples, which uh, which is why it is ugly. And now on this render, it is just a little bit metallic, but not that much finally. I take this and go in my content library, Advanced Metal Creator. If I choose one of the presets, for instance, on this one, okay, I am going to lose my maps. And that's not uh, that's not what I want. I have created maps. It's not in order to lose them. Okay. Oh, maybe this preset is not well chosen for this kind of um, of situation of prop. I just I am just going there, and use the appliers. Appliers will keep um, most of your maps. Okay. Not all of them because um, I cannot keep all of them because it why it would. Uh, produce strange results um, regarding some some of the material presets uh, with those defaults that you have. Some of them are removed. You you may have to to re-add them afterwards, but it will keep your diffuse, your ambient. It will keep normally. It should keep your opacity and your bump. It should keep your displacement too. Prob yes, your normal mapping. I think it should keep your normal mapping. It won't keep your reflection, and in specular, it won't keep your specular color. I think. Uh, I think that's the the differences, and it won't also keep your settings of trends. I have created them in order to uh, apply the average strength uh, that will that will set you to the closest starting points for every kind of maps because you can have very right very clear maps very dark maps and um, you know I can, I can make one applier for each circum circumstances where there is no ambient map there is an ambient map and so on so the appliers are give you the base settings and keeps your map so for instance if i take this i'm sure that it after i render it it is a bit better <clears throat> just a bit but it's not that good why because you have anyway to to apply a bit of setup in there so ambience, ambient color, I'm going to take the map of my diffuse for the ambience, uh, for uh, not that saturated. And I introduce a little bit of, of, of color in it. Okay, and I increase my ambience because I have seen on the previous render that I had too much diffuse components. So I, diffu I decrease the diffuse also by Play, playing, adjusting both color and strength. Uh, no, I should. Okay, it is much darker. No, um, it is darker because for now there is no strong environment map and things like that. Okay, and I'm going to increase the highlights now by going in specular and I increase the specular strength and I decrease a bit the size. Okay, this way I'm fine. I, I go to the initial 70 out one value, which are good initial values. Uh, and now if I render, okay, I have a better overview of what I want. I think I like, I, I lack, sorry, a little bit of diffuse, not diffuse, maybe I lack a little bit of ambience. But before increasing ambience, I want to adjust my reflections. I'm going to adjust my reflections. Uh, for now, there there is no displacement on it. Okay, so I'm going to adjust my reflection first. I it is in a naive environment, and I want the props around the coffee pot to reflect on the coffee pot. So I'm going to increase my ray trace contribution, for instance, to thirty percent. And uh, I want to be globally more reflective because I felt I lacked of energy um, of reflected. Mapped, um, in a mapped 
fake reflection around it. So I increase the strength of the reflection and I increase the ray trace contribution. And this is important to increase this because increasing ray trace contribution will tend to will switch off your map. When it's 100%, your map one is off. When it's 0%, your, your map one is 100%, okay? So here the map one is reduced by 30%. But there is still an underlying map two, which is not uh, influenced by this parameter, okay? Let's make a little render. So now I'm reflecting the prop around. I, I'm reflecting the coffee, the coffee pot, a little bit the fax and the front of the, um, the cabinet. And I see the door too. Let's have a look. Uh, I see the door here, okay, and uh, things like that. So, but this is not well balanced because I have a black hole. The black hole corresponds to perspective view to the huge hole I have here. Here I have nothing to reflect, so my ray tracing cannot reflect anything. So this will have to be... Uh, there is an easy solution, is to add a real environment, okay? I'm going to show you how it works. It's in prop, it's the briefing room. I'm going to load the rest of the room. I'm going to load the sailing, the, th the south area, and what's happening? Okay, and then the east area. Okay, and now if I have a look, I am in a full room, closed room. And if I render, now all my room is reflected on the coffee pots. Okay, so I, I could just go for a purely ray trace contribution. This case you might have to, <coughs> you, you could meet this thing if you, okay, I could have added the floor too, it's not a problem. This thing you can meet if you sell full environment, full closed environment, or with environments with already with domes or things like that. But in general, uh, most of props are sold without any environment. So I'm not going to cheat now. I remove the south wall, I remove the east wall, okay, and the selling grid. And I come back to my initial thing, okay, where there is a huge hole in the environment. And this is the tricky part when you want to be both ray traced and environment map uh, based reflection is to find and adjust the right balance of it. <clears throat> and I, I must recognize this is not always easy. So for not, not too much ray trace. And I am going to add some energy in the environment map reflection, but maybe this, this map is not the right one okay, for this coffee pot. So I have, <coughs> I have increased the ray trace, uh, the, um, the general um, reflection, I have increased the ray contribution, and here, you know, these little things are actually the effects of my of my environment map on on my uh, on my coffee pot, uh, meaning that um, here I have the sky of my environment map, and it does not present enough uh, contrasts contrasted elements to to be uh, to to really fake what I want. I can try to reduce the ray trace contribution. <coughs> It's a little bit less reflective anyway because I, I think it's too 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 reflective really, okay, and render. Okay, now the thing is we will have to merge a real environment with a fake one. So first, not too much ray tracing because if you have a too clear ray tracing you will need a real clear environment map so that you mix and you merge it really, really fine. So not too much ray tracing, I think maybe 20, 18 is the maximum, set more reflective, yes, maybe, but maybe we have to try and see if in the presets, sorry, we find 
the best map for these circumstances and we, if we don't we have other solutions no no need to panic so hmm, this one here is maybe oh this one cover a little bit more the top than this one and this one is the one I, that i use and you see the it is a city and the buildings are on the ground and there is a bright white sky blue sky sorry right and blue sky and uh, the thing is that my sky is here so i have to find something which will present some light variations here and um, credible like va light variations so uh, maybe i could try okay i could try <laughs> this one this one is an environment map uh, based on the briefing room but i think it's the other way around yeah, it's the other way around. <laughs> I was sure of it. Okay, okay. This is an environment map. Okay, where the I see here the cabinet, but it's because the this is a fake reflection. Okay, but it's not the the, the right way for this. Uh, I could take a cold version and blur version of it. And um, here I don't have enough um, light variation to to merge uh, clearly um, the ray trace contribution and the map contribution. This is the most difficult part, okay? So I'm gonna try various maps. For instance, I can render this one. This one has a large uh, green and, um, and orange variation and the scale is too large. So I have to take something with a smaller scale of, um, of, uh, of patterns, okay? And I can try, for instance, this one. And this one is already better, but just a little, maybe too much contra contrasted. Um, so if, we, if I find it too much contrasted, I can eventually, okay, browse, browse. And, uh, whoa, which one is it? Oh, it's at the end, it's all at the end. It's this one. And okay, I like this one, but I find it that for my application there is too much contrast. So, uh, sorry, I'm there. Uh, brightness is brightness okay? Uh, and cancel. Is brightness okay? Brightness is uh, maybe okay. Maybe it's the dark areas that are too dark. And uh, I'm gonna decrease contrast too okay so i'm decreasing contrast hello and I'm decreasing brightness and i don't want to decrease the brightness in the dark areas um what i'm going to do is uh immediately play with curves okay I want it to be much. I'm removing this parameter. It's gonna. Okay. It's annoying me. Okay. I'm going to play with curves uh, in order to decrease the contrast of the dark areas. I just add a curve to decrease globally the power. And maybe it would be better. I'm gonna save as. Uh, yes, I'm going to save the PSD, I don't even know, uh, and also the JPEG version. Uh, I'm going to call it LC1 for low contrast one. Okay, and now I'm going to load this one, bros. LC1, 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 this is less contrasted. Okay and I re-render and this time it is already better you see uh, it, there are these light variations um, which which we feel does not come from light but from an eventual environment and what we're going to do now is immediately add the displacements which are going to blur um, to blur our um, to blur our images ray traced and environment and allow us this way to mix them better 
Let's take for instance displacement 3. I'm going in displacement. Displacement 3 has been loaded in there. Okay, and I want to add as my base displacement my textures because of these white stripes here um, which will allow me to displace this. And now I render. Okay, <clears throat> maybe displacements are a little bit too strong. Okay, the, I have only changed displacement. Now the <laughs> the images are blurred, but much too strongly. So I could go for twenty person. I'm gonna use this preset. I go for twenty percent for every body. And twenty percent is maybe already too much. Uh, we still see the coffee pot. We don't see. We um, we guess the facts, but don't, we don't see it. Uh, Ten percent. Third percent is merging things much better. I'm going to go from fur from from further to see the whole thing okay and i render this and you see you have the reflection of the coffee pot you have here the reflection of the facts and you have some light variations which are due to the map and uh, in this case i am going to increase just my map so I can I have no way to increase my map one so I in which is already at maximum so I increase the map two. Okay, and this is better. You you have filled your hole. Okay, your black hole here is filled and you see the reflection of your environment on it. And it's not too much dependent on the distance. It, it will always be a little bit dependent on the, on the distance. But you see, no, you see your, you don't see the, the, the black hole in the middle. And this is not too strange as, 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 a, as light repartition. And you can see your uh, surrounding props. Okay, uh, you can, I have tweaked this map, but you can create the map which will convey exactly for your application. This one was for Metal 1. Um, we can still embedder it, so we are going to, to till the end of the end of the work for, for Metal 1, okay? Uh, I'd like to I'd like it to be warmer, I'd like it to be more shiny, and um, that's all. So I'd like it to be warmer. The most of the ambient component, the most of the um, base color is in the ambient component. So I'm going. No, I'm going for something a little bit warmer. And in the reflection, I want the reflection warmer too. Okay, this will decrease a little bit the strength of the reflection, but this still should be okay. And to be coherent, the ray trace contribution will be a little bit warmer too. Render. Okay, I uh, I find it is okay like that. So maybe there there's even a little bit too much rays. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say. Okay. Okay, now let's have a look at the second coffee pot, but this time we don't want to apply an isotropic metal, but the anisotropic one. So I take this um, surface, double click there. I can make a first render. Okay, it's um, it's obviously more uh, metallic than, uh, than initially. And I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay, this surface. To this one, <laughs> render, and this is much darker. It's not. It's. It does not behave the same way as I told you before. Okay, uh, but we already have kept the maps and things like that. Now we have to work on the specular part of this one. So specular, I want. Um, a uh, less strong highlight first, because it was obviously too much, too much strong. 
okay so i reduce the strength and i can reduce the strength down to zero it's magical still too much highlight uh, actually it's because of the way it is calculated you can decrease it down to zero and still have power and you are going to be very angry no because then if you want to decrease the strength really you can just up decrease the strength via the specular color okay of it this is decreasing the strength and this give nice uh, uh, highlight variation on on this okay i've decreased the strength i don't have enough map obviously uh, still because it does not behave the same uh, as metal one so my map one is at maximum Okay, I don't want to increase my ray trace contribution for now, though, so I don't touch set more reflectives nor increase ray trace contribution. I don't want globally to increase the ray tracing, so I'm just going to increase the strength of, of map 2, okay, which becomes more visible. No, um, I think my if I, I, it depends if I want to make the same or not, I won't be able to reach exactly the same. <clears throat> because it's not the same model uh, below so I can increase a little bit my ambient too okay and um, now they are much closer uh, in terms of look but still uh, there you will ast always have a strong highlight it's much more highlight contrasted if I want also to decrease the the highlight strength and I can do it by reshaping it. Okay, I'm going to O.4. And uh, can I change? No, I'm gonna. I'm thinking. I'm not going to change this. And I'm going to render. I know the size of the highlight increase and the, the power of it is due to the um, on the surface. Now you may wonder why what is change Y and change Z shape. Actually, it won't do a lot of things when you're isotropic and when highlight when highlight larger direction and one and two are the same. Now, if I decrease, for instance, uh, direction two and make a render, okay, we have this uh, starting point. Okay, here uh, you have the light wrapping a bit of around, uh, it's because of the shape of the object. And now that I have this point, I can change, for instance, the Z shape. And this gives me um, a kind of, you know, focused point here, okay? And you can go on with increasing this effect, 9, 10 now. Okay, and it's moving it a bit and rotating it a bit. And now if we go on 20, I, I put a limit of 20, but I think you can. Uh, so it's still rotating a bit and um, offsetting a bit, okay? And if I change now my anisotropy for a smaller in direction 2 and larger in direction 1, you know, you you have this third uh, highlight feature and it's no longer this way and still the focus point is here. Now I can change a little bit the Y shape and this is changing completely. Maybe I should have gone the other way around. Let me, let me check. Okay. I changed the Y shape and it, now it's it's going it's going a little bit much down. You see, and if I go still down, now the, the, there's a kind of focus point around here. So it's uh, how to define that? It's just like if the object shape was changing and since the object change does not change really but only for the calculus of the highlight it's produce it, it produce deformation of the highlights which are surrealistic let's say okay 
And um, this depends a lot on, on the initial object, uh, on, on the initial shape of the object. Um, and depending on that, you will have very different results. Okay. Um, for instance, I have changed. Um, okay, let's go for this one. I think uh, if I go too high here, I have three light beams. This light highlights this way. And now, if I go completely so Y, if I go Y if almost to zero, keeping this anisotropy factor. I, I have uh, I, I come back to um, to this position of uh, to this shape of a highlight, but this is uh, pretty unpredictable. Okay, except except if you have a, a crazy brain uh, able to calculate all that. Okay, and now the other way around, and you know I, I know I've said the anisotropy the other way around, and this produced these very strange strange highlights. Uh, this is not for metals. This is for the ones so you would like to play uh, with it. I could have kept these features to zero and, and hidden them, but since they might potentially be used for something, then I preferred keeping them. Okay, and here you you almost have uh, some round things. It's just like you change your object shape. But um, for the highlights, but but you keep your object shape for the render. It's um, something like that, okay? And it's, so this this um, they, this allows you to to have uh, funny effects, okay? And um, oh, I, I undo undo, and if you change the camera orientation, the thing is that here um, the highlight is not producing reflection. Uh, and this uh, in this direction, uh, because it is too um, too small in one direction. Okay, so I increase in the direction it was too small until uh, until I see it. They, they, it's been offset <laughs> and deformed too much. So you may tend to lose your highlights um, essentially also because you're almost not anymore in the direction of the reflected beam okay this is visible here you're almost not in the direction of the reflected beam and since you have changed the position of the reflected points you you don't you cannot see the highlights anymore so take care you might um, <laughs> take care of what you are doing with that it's it's a, a, a small playground but uh, check check uh, check that you have all the effects you want in all the directions you want okay uh, that's all i wanted to say uh, regarding this uh, this is not useful for coffee pots um, for coffee pots maybe i, I would just um, i would just have a small uh, anisotropy in this direction i want to be a little bit larger then I'm that I'm high, okay. So uh, I'm I'm scratching a little bit my highlights in the vertical direction. And that's all that I wanted to say. Now the coffee coats are made with model one and model two. Um, here we are. So it's it's okay also from far. And uh, now I'm going to have a look at um, the cabinet underneath. So the cabinet underneath, maybe I would go for, um, uh, let me think, a model 2. Okay, so I just double click. Uh, and here we are the keys, There's, there is some metal 2 and the keys are also metallic there. Um, and there. Okay. So now if I render the cabinets, well, it does not, it does produce almost no highlights because it's flat. Okay. Uh, if we set in, it, it's a flat, um, it's a flat object and we send flat light on it. So if we want to see the reflected beam, we have to find the reflected reflecting angle so 
tuk tuk this would be this orientation approximately let's try so i have reflection on the top and what i want to show you is that if you um okay if you don't um if you're not for a flat object, th there is no curvature. Here it was easy because there was curvatures, okay? And so the highlights naturally appear because of the curvature of the object. Now, uh, for a flat object, uh, you have no reason to have particular highlights unless you, um, unless you are in the direction of the reflected beam, okay? But uh, then this might be constant because I have constant reflection here and I send a constant light of beam. And uh, the thing you have to do is to create your own uh, highlights. Maybe I, I could begin with uh, already a preset. Uh, just begin by, uh, because I want to show you concerning uh, something concerning um, the angles and the flat areas. So I am going to apply the metal two, okay, and I gonna, I'm gonna make a render. Oh, I've kept the old setting. So here with this angle for metal two, I, I'm sorry, I have to correct this because otherwise I, I won't be able to concentrate. Um, all three. A larger directions, all three. Okay, let's go for all three and keep it like that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna be perturbated otherwise. So the cabinet body. Uh, now I'm gonna increase a little bit the size and decrease a little bit the strength of the highlight. Okay, this is very shiny. You see, because you are in the orientation of the light beam and and um, you are on a strong curvature here. Okay, if I have a look at the mesh, uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna cancel. I want to have a look at the mesh of it, so please go, to, go till the end. I don't know why it's not going to the end. Uh, maybe because I, I've pressed cancel. Um, the mesh uh, of it. Okay, here it's very, very curvy. And this is gonna be seen by uh, by the uh, the highlight. The highlight is strong on curvy surfaces. Okay, um, and the highlight is weak, um, not weak. Uh, the highlight is constant. The highlight variation is strong on on curvy surfaces, and the highlight variation is weak on flat surfaces. And uh, the problem, I, I use the metal two because the metal two um, is better for flat surfaces. If I use the metal one, for instance, and make a render, you know, the resulting here on the flat area, you have al almost no no highlight variation and you, you still have the strong highlight here because uh, of the curvature of the object and probably also the, li the li light's orientation. And if I go for a model two and make a render, here you have a much a stronger highlight variation. Model two is uh, will help you with flat uh, flat surfaces. Okay. Uh, yet I keep uh, I keep on preferring model one. Um, it will help you, but it will also depend on your light and camera versus object orientation. Um, this is less obvious. Uh, here I am. I must be in the perfect reflection angle because I have really strong uh, highlights. I'm going to take this flat area here and apply a metal too. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. The, yes, I'm on the doors. And if I make a render, you know, I'm really flat. Um, it's because. Um, um, model 2 will help you, but will not be able to solve all your problems. So let's, uh, let's retake this point of view and just, I turn this down this way and uh, maybe I should raise it also and raise it there. And now if I make a render, you see, I have 
I have the right reflection. This is not a matter of the way I've defined my material. It's um, it's the way it is uh, oriented regarding the, the, the lights of the scene. Uh, this is really hard to solve. Um, I'm undoing the moves, okay? So uh, maybe... Um, Okay, let's say your users will probably work with infinite lights. So what thing you can do to see uh, reflections even even if uh, even when there there are there are no special light for that is uh, to to adjust uh, your reflection and your specular and also your displacements. So um, I I want to have a larger uh, highlights and forced highlights uh, first um, it doesn't help me a lot just a bit but not a lot since I'm, I'm not in the angle of the reflected beam how could I have some elements in the angle of the reflected beam here I can use some micros uh, millimetric not microscopic millimetric elements uh, using I don't know displacement presets, so I'm, uh, it may be not the right one for my application. But I'm going to load this displacement. Uh, what does it look like? Okay, it's gonna be have to be a little bit more, a little bit more strong. Okay, and now you see, you see small, um, small, small light variations. Okay. This is really a different. I got. I set it to zero. Re-render, and we're going to compare the two renders. So I wait a, a little bit. Okay, and now I go in the render editor in order to compare the two renders. Wow, one hundred and thirty-six. Okay, uh, toggle. You see now you have. A little bit more the impression that this is metallic because you have all these little points of reflected light on it okay uh, this is a way to <clears throat> to whatever happens whatever the initial light direction is approximately uh, if, if there is no light going on it there is no light but uh, even if the orientation of the light is not perfect at the beginning, there will still be uh, some reflected points or reflecting surfaces which you, which will send you light in the direction of your camera. And these are all these small reflecting elements. And uh, this is the most um, easy, I think, s uh, trick to use in order to fake uh, metals on on flat flat areas, okay, um, and which will not depend on uh, on the lighting circumstances. If you are your own users and you don't want to you don't want to sell content, you're not forced to do that. You just have to do just like it's done there. Place the light on the right orientation in order to enhance your metal. But since you're a mer merchant, um, you're a content creator, then you have to anticipate all the possible lighting situations. So um, that's why you're going to be forced to do that. So I'm going to increase displacement, uh, maybe 100 to 100%. I, I'd like to have a look uh, at what happens, um, tiles not offset, uh, if I have stronger things, okay, maybe uh, I'm gonna be much too much there, okay? Okay, this is obviously much more metallic, but this is also obviously much more too rough. So now the job is to find uh, the compromise. I am going to increase the specular output. I'm going also to force a little bit the reflection, which will allow me to decrease a little bit um, this displacement. Uh, uh, Okay, I set the new limits of variations and the tile, I don't remember how it will look like. Uh, the tile, maybe, I'm afraid that if I don't put it at one, it would be too... Well, I'm going to try at one once again. 
Okay, the tile at what one may be good. I'm still going to increase the specular a little bit. Uh, what if I shape the highlights? Um, what if I decrease them? I could decrease them. Now that I have my, now that I have my small points of light, I can play on that. And now I can darken the whole thing. Um, okay, wait a minute. Before darkening the whole thing, um, you have to think about how your props are going to be used. For the cabinet, it is very, there is a low probability that someone renders just the cabinet, okay? Or uh, maybe if he's a cabinet crazy man, I don't know. But the cabinet will be at least on a floor. So I'm going to add the floor uh, props. Uh, briefing room. I'm going to add the floor first, okay? And it's gonna be in its environment. And I think that if I add a floor and ray tracing, okay, maybe maybe the one who would render will not add a, a, a sailing. It's not mandatory, but at least the cabinet will rely on a floor, okay? So uh, now that I have a floor, I I'm going to load one of the. Where I am, uh, I'm C two two. I am going to load one of the uh, reflection mirror metal presets for metal two, and I'm going to have a look at the name. I want ray strong or ray medium and highlight strong. I'm going to begin by ray medium and highlight strong, and it will change the parameters there. The thing is that, uh, okay, it's decreased so specular outputs. This influences a lot of parameters, okay? <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm going to decrease my displacement now because my displacement prevents me from seeing anything. So I remember that in there I can set everything to zero. Let's have a look at zero, okay. Now, when I have a low, um, a low displacement, I am imaging uh, by ray tracing only uh, the environment in front of me. I'm gonna come back to the same problem as the coffee steel, I think, because I'm, if I'm going this direction... Now, I'm reflecting the floor, okay, I'm reflecting the floor, but if I'm going closer and I change the camera orientation, then I'm reflecting the empty, the big empty, okay, the big empty thing. So, for this one, I am going to add just a bit displacement, just like the other one, 10 or 20, just like previously for, for uh, okay, 10 or 20. So, here is probably the reflection of my floor and the reflection of my wall. 20 is too much. 20 is too much. I'm going to come back to 10. 10. Render. Okay, 10 is a little bit better. Ah, I don't have 5. <laughs> I have not set up 5. So let's go for this. This 5. Oh, this one is empty. Okay, let's put up 5 anyway. And normal. Do I have something in normal? I, my normal is empty too. Okay and re-render okay so i see my floor i guess my floor i guess my floor or uh, maybe i can go for even something smaller uh displacement i'm gonna try two okay i'm making an image of my floor and it's very blurred uh, so I'm gonna keep these initial settings and um, I am going to increase the map or, or actually increase the map is maybe not the, the, the right um, the right term. Um, what I can show you is that you have a flat object and a round environment <coughs> and sometimes um, I'm gonna take a long distance. I apply this map. 
okay and I make a render and this gives a flat reflection um, the curvature of this is too null <laughs> to, to do something coherent uh, you can even go for very uh, very strong variation of you, you're gonna be quite almost almost monochrome okay so uh, what you, you can do here I'm gonna take uh, any map I'm gonna take the initial map I, I, it doesn't matter it's just gonna, gonna give the basic color of it um, what can be done is uh, not change the the reflection map or the strength uh, or, but change the, the strength uh, with which it applies I uh, would like um, well, uh, I'm the environment map energy. Uh, what do I have? I can. Oh, sorry, not in this parameter, but in this parameter, I am going to change the strength, the the, the map strength of it. Um, the, now the variation of the reflection cannot come from the map, which is going just to give the color on, on this orientation. It's gonna come from uh, the strength with which I apply the map. Okay, uh, no, not this one. Uh, okay, once again, I don't remember which one it is. No, in a fractal one. Okay, uh, fractal one. Uh, maybe it's not the right one. I'm gonna try this. Okay, okay, see, this is just the strength of the map. Uh, I have a small problem <laughs> with the map I've used. It is just a little bit too, too contrasted. Uh, it was just to, to give um, the idea of it. Okay. Uh, so I am going to choose something else. Maybe I can choose this. No, no, no. Well, I, I load it anyway. I can choose this one and reapply this map here, black and white. There, black and white one and black and white one. This is much less contrasted. Um, let's make a render. Okay, this could be better. This is the the the, the, the strength of the reflection which now presents features. Because if I don't give strength to the reflection, I haven't shown you, but I have to show you this anyway. Okay, I'm taking this map, for instance, as a reflection, and there is no strength on the reflection, and the result is almost constant. Okay, and because it's it's so flat there uh, if i have if i had a curvature it would change anything create a new deformer and um i'm going to to show you what's uh, how it's working with the curvature okay they give me my deformer this okay oh, it's it's a shame to break such a beautiful cabinet okay and um, with this deformation you begin to see the features of the map um i'm gonna make a strong deformation there okay now this this is almost strong okay and now you see the environment map because the environment map only tells that in from this direction this light is coming and from the other direction this color uh, is coming and if you're completely flat you see i i won't change um i won't change the the, the map i am just going to remove the deformer and now render again and now it's flat again and it's not a matter of scale or things like that oh yes i'm gonna cancel the render sorry it's just a matter of flatness of the thing um if I undo, you see, and I take any map, any map, uh, it, it works with all the maps, you see. Uh, no, not not distort one. I just want to drag it. Drag it. Sorry, um, I, I, it's difficult for me to grab it. Okay. Now I render from far, and I see the variation. Okay. I take another map, and this one, for instance. Oh, take my map, please. Okay, it's gonna be better. Sorry, it's my fault. It's not the software's one. Okay, you'll see the variation because you have angle uh, variations of incoming lights. The problem is that if you go for something extremely flat, uh, remove the deformer. Okay, then 
same map will be uh, will will send a flat light. You have to compensate that. You cannot work with your map, but you can work with the strength which with which this map applies. Uh, so uh, let's go. Uh, I thought it was okay. This one is too. I remember this one is too 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 strong. So I'm gonna take the black and white one. Okay, black and white, and now your reflection, <coughs> your reflection strength. It is just as is your reflection map is constant, but the strength is varying, and the strength is UV mapped, and this might help us. Uh, it is black and white one. Now, when I render, the variation is coming from the pattern I'm using on it, and what I can do is to change tile, the general tile, because the, I have no um, I have no map uh, underneath. Though I can change all at four, for instance. So I check. Hey, young boy. Well, oh, I'm going to make it manually sometimes. Okay. And well. This is maybe too, 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 too contra contrasted. So I'm going to take this map, and I am going to uh, browse to it. Uh, I don't know if I'm using this one or another one since I want to modify it. I'm going to modify another another one. I'm going to take the fractal one. Okay, send it to Photoshop, duplicate, not to damage it too much, and I'm going, okay, to, whoa, 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 whoa. take it easy. Uh, finally, I'm not sure the fractal one was the best idea I had during the day. Um, I just want to lower the contrast of it, um, but uh, the way it is made, it's not ob obvious. <coughs> Brightness, contrasts, contrast, contrast. Mm. Uh, just the levels, so maybe just the levels. Okay. Okay. Uh, save for web, not for web, uh, save as. Uh, okay, this way, and save as in GPG. Low contrast. Okay. Um, I, I get it's not, uh, it's not what I wanted. I should blur it. Filter blur, Gaussian blur. I go. Go for blur, not that much. I go for blur, blur, blur again, 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 again. It's somewhere around that, and it's around me. Mm. It's not obvious to find where it's sitting. Oh, maybe that thing. And blur it a little bit more. Filter Gaussian blur repeats and repeats. Uh, maybe it could be okay this way. Save as uh, GPG. Low contrast. Yes, I want to try this one. And now it is modified. I'm gonna load it. Uh, Frac one low contrast and put the tile at two. Okay, we're. Uh, it's better. It's not what we, what we want, but it but it's better. And uh, we are going to decrease uh, the reflection maps, all the reflections. Um, let's have a look to decrease the, the the reflection influence globally. I think we I, I should go for something even less contrasted or something more um, conceived for this situation. 
And this is something I'm, I'm rapidly modifying, but I guess it's not the right solution. And uh, oh, what I'm gonna put known for map one. Oh, that's that may be fun. I'm putting known for map one. Okay, so this mixing the two maps. One map is uh, altered. I say what's what one color is uh, is um, is changed by the threads, and the other one is not. It allows me to mix more. And no, I want to increase the ray trace contribution. Uh, and it's gonna change my initial mix, but okay. So now I have retrace. I see my environment, and I want to increase the map too. Uh, except that um, what I want to do is to keep this one. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to keep uh, a low contribution of the strength that I'm using on the environment maps. Uh, and it's not a good one. Frack one. Frack one. Low contrast. This one has known. This one, now that I have set up ray trace, um, this map two becomes the less, the more uh, contributive. So, uh, and then map two this way. Well, even more eventually. And I want to find the, the right, I want to find the right mix of um, map one and map two and <laughs> ray tracing. Uh, it's not impossible. It's already better than in the beginning. Um, what I see is that my ray, my ray trace contribution is too strong uh, and my strength map is not strong enough. So if I decrease this, anyway, I increase this. So it is perfect. It's exactly what I want. So I'm. I, it's not enough. I'm still going to decrease this. Okay. Okay, it's merging. It's merging. It's not optimal. But now we have the impression that we can find something more optimal. So maybe I could uh, decrease a little bit the map 1, the one which is wearing a strength, and increase a little bit the map 2. Okay, and have a look. Okay, this is a very, very fast setup. Okay, if you're creating an object, you can really create the map of a light variation that you want on, on, your, on your prop. And what it shows you and what it's important to understand is that you have another lever, um, another action lever to, uh, another way to, to, to define your reflection is the way you apply your strength. And this one is great because you can tile it too. Okay, um, this one you cannot tile. This one is an, an environment. It's making a round a sphere around your your prop, but this one is UV is UV, and uh, and in the tile is linked to the to the initial tile there.